Hey there, this is Andrew, and today we're going to be looking at asset bundles, specifically asset bundles when it comes to mobile and using video on mobile. Because it can be pretty tricky, and I think once you can do video, you can pretty much do everything else. And I'm sort of making this video because when I was trying to figure out how to do this, I couldn't really find any good resources that pointed me in the right direction. And it's actually pretty simple to do. So what we're going to be doing in this video is that we're actually going to be creating some asset bundles. We're going to be creating the loader for them, and then we'll actually be playing the actual video from that asset bundle. And I already have a really basic project set up here. I have a canvas with a raw image attached to it. And nothing particularly special about this raw image. The size of it is just 512 by 512, and I've already sent a render texture here. And that render texture can be found right here in my assets folder. And this is the video that's going to be using that render texture. And it's just a simple looping video of this little creature guy I made a while back. And the first thing that we're going to need to do is actually get the Asset Bundle browser from the Asset Store. So if you go to the Asset Store and you type in Asset Bundle Browser, you'll get something that looks like this. And you'll just want to download it and import it into your project. And now that we have that imported into our project, the first thing that we're actually going to do is set up our basic video player. So if we go to our scene view, we're going to go to our hierarchy and we're going to right click and we're going to create a new empty game object. I'm going to go ahead and reset our transform and we're going to add a video player to that. And then we're going to take our video and we're going to slot it right into our video clip. And our render mode is currently set to our render texture or a render texture. So we're just going to place our asset that we've already created in there. And we don't have any audio right now. So I'm going to go ahead and disable that. And let's go ahead and rename this to video player. And since I've already put that render texture into my raw image, if we go ahead and hit play, it's going to show our video. And there we go. This is pretty much the end result that we're going to be getting, but in our case, we're going to need to create the asset bundle and load our video from it. So it's going to be a little bit more difficult. So let's go ahead and stop that. Let's go to our video player, and then let's go ahead and just delete that video clip for right now. And we'll loop it and disable our play on awake. Now let's go ahead and create a script that we're actually going to be using to load our asset bundle. And we're just going to call it video loader. And we're going to go ahead and go to our video player and attach our video loader script to the object. Now let's go ahead and open up this script in Visual Studio. All right, now here we are in our video loader script. It's not going to be terribly difficult, but we're going to have to make a couple of coroutines and a couple of variables, but nothing too crazy. So let's go ahead and let's reformat this. Let's go ahead and get rid of this start event, and we're going to be adding an awake. Awake. And what we're going to be doing here is just we're going to be getting our video player, setting up our compression, and checking for our cache. And then within update, we're going to be waiting for some input to start the download and playing of our video. And then we'll be adding a few more coroutines below that for the actual downloading. But before we get into any of that, let's make our variables. So we're going to have a public string that we're going to be calling MURI. And this basically is going to be our URL for the link that we'll be getting our asset bundle from. We'll also be creating a public boolean for clearing our cache. And you need this sometimes when you're troubleshooting your packages, you want to clear the cache every time you play your project. So this is going to be our clear cache and we're going to initialize this to false. And then we need a couple of private variables. We'll need one for our video player and another for our asset bundle that we're going to be pulling. So first we're going to start with our video player, but before we do that we need to Add our namespace up at the top. I always forget that. So it's going to be our Unity Engine dot video, and it's going to be our video player. We'll initialize that to null, and then we'll need a private asset bundle, and we'll just be calling that bundle and initializing that to null as well. And within our awake function, we're going to be first setting that video player. So we can have access to the play functionality of that once we set the clip. And then next, we're going to be doing something very important. When you're doing this on mobile, mobile doesn't necessarily support compression and within the cache specifically. And this primarily applies to Android. I'm not exactly sure about iOS. So we're going to be wanting to access our caching class. 
and do compression enabled equals false. And we want to explicitly set this because compression enabled is set to true by default. And the package will download onto the device, it'll be able to get the asset, but it won't be able to actually play the video. And then we'll have a quick if statement for our clear cache boolean, and we'll access that cache in class again, and we'll call clear cache. All right, and next thing we're gonna add both of our coroutines that we're gonna need. So the first one we're gonna be making is we're gonna be calling download and play. And this is specifically going to be basically holding all of our functionality. So we're gonna be getting the bundle, waiting, and then actually setting the video. And then we'll just put a yield return null for the time being. And then we'll just go ahead and copy this and we'll set our get bundle. And you can start the download and play with on, within start, but for me, I'm going to just bind it to our spacebar. So, so once the user hits space, we're gonna to wanna to start the coroutine, download, and play. Pretty simple so far. We're getting our video player, we set up our spacebar to download and play, and we've set up both of our coroutines. And the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do within download and play is actually call our get bundle coroutine. And we're basically placing a coroutine within a coroutine so we can get the bundle and we can wait for it to complete before continuing. So once we hopefully successfully get our bundle, we're actually gonna to check to see if it exists. So if we have a bundle, oh, or if we don't have a bundle actually, we're gonna debug log bundle failed to load. And then we'll yield break, which is very much how a, a return would work in a void function. So we'll get our bundle, we check to see if it exists, and then we're gonna be setting it in our video player. So we'll get our video clip, we'll call it a new video clip, We'll be getting our bundle, and we'll be loading an asset. And I'll explain a little bit more about this in just a second. Once we actually create the bundle, we'll come back in here and I'll explain a little bit more about it. So what this line here does is, we're gonna be getting the bundle that we're gonna be getting from our coroutine down here, and we're gonna be calling load asset and we're gonna be passing in the type of what we wanna get. And in our case, it's gonna be a video clip. If it's a prefab or a material or something like that, you would put that here. But for a prefab, it'd be a game object naturally. So let's say we successfully get our video clip here. Then we're actually just wanna go access the clip within our video player. It's gonna to set to our new clip, and then we're just gonna play it. All right, and this is all pretty simple. We actually haven't even start actually getting our bundle yet. So this is done. So if we move down to our get bundle, the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is make a request. And it's going to be in the www class, and we're gonna be naming this request. You can also name it whatever you want. And for the www class, there's a lot of different ways of getting information from the internet. But in this case, when we are specifically dealing with asset bundles, we want to use the load from cache or download. So if we access the www class again, I should probably come up with a different name for saying that, <laughs> but we'll get load cache or download. And this is great because it handles pretty much everything for us and is a really simple way of doing this. And all we have to give it is that URL that we set up at the top that we haven't set yet because we haven't created our bundles and put it up some yet, somewhere yet, but we will be doing that. So we'll place our URL there. And then for our hash, we don't necessarily have to worry about that now, so we can just put zero there. So we've made our request and now we just wanna wait. So there's a few different ways that we can do this, but we're gonna be doing this this particular way so we can print out the current progress of the request. So we're gonna have a while loop and we're gonna be checking while the request is not done. So 
if we access that request object that we just created, we can access is done, which is going to be a Boolean value. And then we're going to debug log the current progress of it. And you can also print out this progress to a text object or something like that. So you can let the user know how much of the bundle has been downloaded. And naturally, since we're in a while loop in a coroutine, we'll have to add yield return null as well. So we've made our request. We're waiting for it to complete. And once it's completed, we need to check if we've completed it without any errors. So we're going to make an if statement. We'll be accessing that request. We'll be checking to see if any errors exist. But if we don't have any errors, we want to set our bundle variable that we created earlier up here at the top with our request, if I can type request, <laughs> and we're going to be getting the asset bundle from that request. And then we'll create another debug log and we'll be adding a success. And now I'm using debug log instead of print because if you want to debug this in the Android device monitor, these will come up within that. But getting back to this, if we actually do have an error, we're going to add a little else here. We're going to debug log and we'll be putting our request error there. So, we'll, so if we have any issues, we'll be able to print those out and we can see them and then be able to actually debug our program. All right, and that about does it for the actual script. We actually no longer need this yield return. And we're actually going to need to come back and set this string once we've actually created our bundle. And I'll explain more of that once we do it. So let's add a little to do here to do add string. I'm totally going to forget about this. So let's just wait for that. <laughs> so let's go back into Unity. And we added our asset bundle browser earlier. So if we go up to window, I believe it is. Let's hope. Yes, it is. We're going to go to our asset bundle browser and we're going to click that. We're going to dock it right up here. And we have these three tabs here. And I've actually already created my bundle here. So let's just go ahead and delete that so you can watch me do it. You should see something that looks like this. And all you really need to do, it's pretty simple, is grab whatever asset or number of assets that you want to put into a bundle. Just click and drag it within and it's already basically created a bundle for us. Now, if you notice, the asset name is creature and our bundle name is creature. So if we go back into Visual Studio for that string that I just put a to do comment for, we'll need to put the string creature there so we know which asset to get from the bundle. So let's do that really quick. So here we are. And all we have to do is write creature here for the actual asset that we want to be pulling from the bundle. Let's go ahead and delete this comment. And now let's go back into Visual Studio so we can actually build that bundle out. All right, so now that we have the basic setup of our asset bundle, we actually have to build it. So if we go to our build tab here, we'll have all these different settings here and even our advanced settings. We really don't have to mess with any of this, but sometimes when you're debugging, you may want to either disable the compression or actually force rebuild it and clear everything to make sure that you're constantly getting new asset bundles and you're not getting anything weird. But for that, we don't necessarily have to work with that at all. So let's go ahead and collapse that. And I do usually keep clear folders on just to empty out everything when I'm creating new bundles. But since we are targeting Android for this particular build, we're going to go to our build target up here. We're going to drop down to Android, make sure that our output path is within assetbundles.android, and we're just going to go ahead and hit build. And it's going to give us this little prompt if we have the clear folders checked. We're just going to go ahead and hit yes. It's going to think really quick. And that's pretty much it. It actually wasn't, <laughs> it's not really kind of anticlimactic actually. Well, I think I spoke a little bit too soon. Okay, now I think it's done. So if we go in here and we right click and you go to show and explore, it's gonna take you to the root of your project and you should have a new folder that says asset bundles. So if you double click that, you're going to get a folder that says Android or whatever build target you happen to click. And if you click in there, we're gonna have an Android file and an Android manifest, and then we're gonna have a creature and a creature manifest, which this is going to be that creature bundle that we just created. And now that this is created, we're actually gonna to wanna to put it up somewhere for us to download from. And in my case, for this particular demonstration, I'm gonna be using Google Drive. I don't recommend using Google Drive. I'd probably use something like Amazon Web Services or Azure or 
something like that. But most certainly do not try and use Dropbox or Google Drive for your project. It's not gonna, it's not gonna work out very well for you in the long run. So let's go ahead and open up Google Drive and copy this into it. All right, so here we are on Google Drive and I'm gonna go ahead and copy both the creature file and the creature manifest file into my Google Drive. And once they've copied over, we're gonna go ahead and go to our creature file. We're gonna right click and we're gonna get a shareable link. And we're gonna copy it, make sure it's accessible, and then we're gonna go ahead and hit done. And the one thing about Google Drive we're gonna to have to do is make sure that it is a direct link. And the one thing about Google Drive and Dropbox is that they don't provide direct links. So we're gonna to need to do a little bit of magic to make sure it works. So let's actually go ahead and go back into Unity really quick. And let's actually also go ahead and let's edit this script within our video loader script actually. So let's go ahead and go into Visual Studio. And if we scroll up to our URI here, let's go ahead and add a comment. Because like I said, we're gonna to need to convert this to a direct link. So this is going to be the actual code for the file. Everything, all this other stuff is sort of decorative for sharing. So let's go ahead and we'll cut that out. Note that it's going to be in between these two, I can't know if they're forward or backwards, I never know which one they are, but that's the thing that you're gonna need. If you cut that out, we're gonna add another comment and just place that in there for right now. It should be something that looks like that. And then we're gonna to need to convert it to a direct link like I said before. And this is more or less what you're going to need. It's gonna be Google Drive with this forward slash, you see question mark export equals download and then the ampersand ID equals, and then it's going to be this string right here. Now if I'm gonna have a link in the description to a blog that'll show you how to do this, but if you already have a place that you're uploading these to, you don't have to do this. This is purely to show that it is working. So we have our full direct URL here. So if we copy it into our URI right here, just go ahead and do that, hit save. And now let's go into Unity to see if this will actually work. Actually, let's go ahead, since this is a public variable, we're gonna place it in our inspector. So let's go ahead and just delete that out and let's go back into Unity. And one thing I forgot to mention is that when you're building this to Android, you'll probably want to replace this get key down with the space bar. If you want to, you can take it out completely and just start the coroutine in a awake or a start. But for me, I'm going to go ahead and change this to a mouse input. So if I just go to input, get mouse button down. And if you just put zero there, it will start the coroutine once you've tapped on the screen. So on our video player, we're gonna have this public field here. I'm gonna put my URL in there. I'm gonna go ahead and clear the cache just to make sure we get a sort of a clean play. Let's go ahead and hit save really quick and then let's hit play. And then if we click into our game view and hit spacebar, you can see the numbers going up and then we get a success. So let's let this play for a second and then let's pull our console up so we can see what happened. So if you remember, we put that debug in there to show the progress. And as it was sort of getting the URL, we we're at zero. And then it's gonna be a value between zero and one. So right here, we're gonna be at 15%. And if we scroll down, we go to 60. And I think as soon as it gets to somewhere in the 80s, it'll just sort of jump up to 100. So once we get to 87, the next time it goes to print again, we've actually completed loading the video. And that about does it for this video. Thank you for watching, and before I go, I just wanted to say thank you for a thousand subscribers. I hit it within the last week, and I'm actually really surprised that I've gotten this far. If you would like to see more of my videos, obviously you can feel free to subscribe, and if you have any questions or need any help, feel free to comment below. I do read all of them, <laughs> so I'll see you next time.